Hello, it's Christine here, and today we are doing a workshop called Discover and Sketch African Elephants. So thank you so much for joining me today. So today's focus is on African elephants. I have done previous workshops on other species uh, that you can find uh, in my Crowdcasts and also in my uh, course, Sketching uh, Mammals of the World. So we're going to focus on African elephants and we're going to um, be speaking a lot about their anatomy so that we can really understand um, how they are put together and be able to draw them more realistically. And then lastly, we're going to do our step-by-step -step drawing demonstration. And then I hope you can share your sketches uh, or questions uh, at the end. So our suggested materials are um, whatever you have on hand, whatever is your favorite thing, but I'm going to be using um, this graphite pencil and a shading pencil and a little blending stomp, or you could use a Q-tip and also um, a piece of paper um, or the elephant image that's available um, at the link below where it says download resources here. So in general, um, I suggest that you uh, download and print those uh, beforehand, but if you haven't done so already, that's okay. I'll have some um, nice big photos uh, with the step-by-step -step that you can uh, follow along to. Okay, so where do elephants live in the world? Well, the ones we're focusing on today um, are the African elephants. And there's two species, um, a savanna uh, species that is the most well-known. Uh, and that's the one we're drawing today. And there's also one that lives in forests. So we're talking about uh, sub-Saharan Africa. And then uh, Asian elephants are over uh, here in Asia. And I've spoken about those in um, past workshops. Uh, do tell me in the chat box if you've uh, joined me for either of those workshops before. Okay, so um, basically anatomy of an African elephant, the parts to notice in order to draw a realistic elephant. <laughs> so as you know, um, I try to teach you guys how to draw everything in the world. And there's only two things that you need to know to draw anything, whether it's an elephant or a cat or a dog, or whether it's a landscape um, or uh, uh, buildings. All you have to know are two things, and that's um, the parts or anatomy to understand understand um, very well. And then also some of the drawing skills. So we're going to be talking about both of those today. All right. And so, you know, I usually always start with showing you a skeleton. So you really understand the internal parts. So you know where the angles are supposed to be. Okay. And so like here we have this um, angle of the top of the head here. Uh, we've got the shoulder, just kind of like a horse has withers, and that's sort of hidden here behind the ear, actually. <laughs> then we have a nice long tail, and then um, the rib cage that's uh, hidden under a really big, thick um, uh, body that has a lot of, of course, internal organs right here. And then we've got the limbs, uh, and all of these are the same bones we have in our body. So um, the scapula and the forearm and the lower arm, and you can see the, the edge of the shoulder here. You can see the elbow very clearly right here. Uh, you can see the wrist right here. And then with the um, rear legs, uh, you can see the back angle of where the hip is right here, where the tail attaches. And then you can see the knee, although it's kind of hidden um, on the in the edge of the belly here. Uh, and then you can see the ankles right here, that angle. So really understanding uh, the skeletal stru structure will help you to draw something a lot more uh, quickly and confidently and accurately. All right, and then here's another um, example. And so uh, you may have joined me before where we actually um, draw over a skeleton like this. And um, I always suggest that if you go to a natural history museum and you can actually see mounted specimens um, and the, the mounted skeleton to practice drawing both of those. So again, that you really understand where your angles um, should be for the various uh, joints of the body. So um, moving on now to the external part, and we're going to start at the head. 
Um, elephants have pretty small eyes and they don't have really great eyesight. Their sense of smell and especially hearing is a lot better. Uh, but here's one of their beautiful eyes and there's a lot of wrinkles around the eyelids um, and some very long eyelashes to help keep um, dust and sand out of them. And then um, you see with the skull, there's these uh, kind of indentations um, on the top of the head and uh, above the eyes here and then below the eyes. So the head kind of goes uh, kind of out and in and out and in. Um, okay. And then we've got the African elephant we're drawing today, which has these giant ears. And a lot of people say their ears are shaped like the continent of Africa. So you've got the top of Africa here um, and then coming all the way down to the point here of South Africa. And here's another side view. And of course, um, noticing in each of these photographs that uh, the, the tusks are very uh, different. Um, they take uh, quite a while to uh, grow. They are an incisor. Um, and so they're going to grow uh, throughout their life. And about a third of the, um, the tusk is hidden inside um, of the jawbone here. Uh, but they grow longer throughout life. But if they break, um, they don't grow back, just like one of our um, incisors. So it won't grow back. And every, um, e every elephant has really unique ones. In fact, that's one way to um, tell different individuals. If you're on a safari and your safari guide might know an individual because they might have a broken tusk or might have one that's really um, curved up or down kind of oddly. And uh, the elephants, of course, use those tusks in a lot of ways, um, uh, both as communication and to protect themselves and to help dig uh, in the dirt or in the mud to help get to water. So they're going to use those in a lot of ways. Uh, and the size, the ultimate size is inherited. Uh, and unfortunately, throughout the decades that elephants have uh, been illegally poached um, to for their tusks, for the ivory trade, um, elephants have been born um, more with smaller and smaller tusks. Okay, I'm just checking the chat box here. Okay, and they do have a dominant tusk, uh, just like with humans have a dominant left or right hand. So they tend to um, use one of those tusks more. Uh, and then sp staying with the, the head um, now. So again, they have um, these really big ears and then they have, of course, the trunk. And that trunk in the African elephant has two kind of um, points to it or lips. And those are very prehensile, meaning they can really use those to grasp leaves or to drink water um, or to communicate and then um, they do have a voice. <laughs> I don't have a recording of a voice right now, but um, it's really a low frequency rumble. It's often made to warn other elephants at long distances of current situation where they have also have high frequency sounds like trumpeting, barking, snorting, and other large, loud calls um, used to communicate to those that are nearer. Um, they also communicate um, through their um, feet. They can hear sounds through their feet. Okay, what else? Um, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, the ears. I'm trying to look at my notes here. They have excellent um, hearing. Uh, and, of course, they flap them to keep cool. So it's um, they're not flapping them like when they're mad. Um, they're flapping them to keep cool because they have lots of blood vessels in them. And of course, they're smaller in the Asian species of elephant. And again, I've done a different workshop where I talk more about the comparison of African and Asian elephants um, in a different workshop that also you can find inside my Sketching Mammals of the World course. So that trunk, oh wait, sorry. So that trunk has 40,000 muscles. Can you believe that? Um, and um, so they have really fine motor uh, movement of that trunk. And it takes the, the babies quite a while to learn how to um, move it with accuracy. 
Um, it can be used to hold gallons of water. It can lift logs and um, even nip little twigs. So it can um, do fine motor skills and then strong um, brute force muscle. Uh, and they can um, use um, the, uh, uh, the trunk to uh, throw water um, over their bodies um, and to throw dust over them to keep them cool. And of course, they use them for touch, like communication, and even used as a snorkel when swimming. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, looking overall at their skin, uh, they have lots of wrinkles and the African has um, more than the Asian. And of course, they don't have much um, hair on their bodies. Uh, yeah. And then uh, moving on to males or females. Uh, so the males, this is um, the African savanna elephant is the largest, um, heaviest ter um, ter terrestrial um, mammals. So they get up to be uh, 12 feet high. And let's see, where did I have the um, weight? Oh yeah, up to 4,000 pounds. Isn't that amazing? And so noticing, you can notice in the females, they have the mammary glands and those are um, under the front arms, just like in humans. And here's a picture I took when I was in Borneo um, of a family of the um, um, Bornean pygmy elephants that are more closely related to Asian elephants. But it's a great picture because if you look right here, you can see the mother's right mammary gland or teat. And earlier um, in this day, um, before the, these elephants walked across the road, she was nursing this baby. It was so cute. Um, Joseph is asking about my online courses. So yes, um, I do have a discount. That discount was sent to you um, in an email earlier this morning, as well as you can find it at the top of the chat box. And also where it says download resources here. Again, that's 30% off um, of my whole course. And you can learn more about that uh, later on. Okay. Okay, sorry, where am I here? Get my place. And there's a, a mama with her baby. And of course, those uh, babies are dependent on their mothers for quite a long time because it takes a long time for them to learn how to use that trunk and to understand how they, um, their place uh, in society because uh, elephants have quite complex uh, societies and, and lots, to, to, lots to learn. And then uh, here's an example of a male, and um, there's this wet spot here, if you notice, behind the um, ear, or I mean, sorry, between the ear and the eye. And this is an area that um, is wet because it's leaking um, this uh, substance called must. And that is uh, leaked when they have a whole lot of testosterone and when they're um, really revved up and, and ready to mate. So that's um, another way you can tell males. Of course, they're larger, and of course, they also have um, a uh, reproductive structures. <laughs> okay, so let's move on, getting closer to tips for sketching. Uh, let me see. I just sometimes I feel like here, <laughs> I want to say hi for a moment. Um, so, like we said in the beginning, um, you can draw anything in the world. You just have to know two things. One of them is understanding the parts of what you're drawing, whether it's a, a, a sports car or whether it's a giraffe or whether it's um, a cityscape, um, knowing that the parts or the anatomy. And the second part, um, is uh, understanding uh, basic sketching skills. And it really doesn't take, you know, 10,000 hours, like some people say, to be able to uh, get really good at something. Uh, in fact, I did this little sketch this morning in literally about five minutes. Now, of course, that's because I've had a lot of practice um, drawing elephants and using uh, these various tools. But um, this was a drawing I did just on this nice uh, toned paper, which I really like colored paper for drawing, especially when I'm sketching in the field, uh, because it doesn't have as much glare, especially if we're pretending to do a virtual safari today and sketching live elephants in the field, there will be a lot of glare from that hot African sun. So I like to draw um, on toned paper, often this nice tan color. And then sometimes I'll use like a, um, a charcoal pencil for my darks. 
And then I'll have an, a white charcoal for some highlights. And that's all you need is a dark and a light. And then the uh, toned paper kind of gives you the middle value. All right. So um, what else? So like I said, you just need to know two things in order to draw anything in the world. You need to know its parts and some basic um, sketching skills. And so we're just going to go over those quickly here. Um, we don't have all day here. And many of you have um, uh, heard all of this before. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. Again, you can learn a lot more about the details of sketching and particularly how to sketch mammals um, in my course. Okay, and so basically um, my tips for sketching are just staying really uh, light and loose. So like when I was drawing this, I, you know, I was just, let me turn to a new page. I was just um, holding my pencil very lightly and just drawing like this. And I was just keeping my pencil moving and not erasing as if I was actually in the field um, trying to observe a real elephant. And I would be looking at my subject more than the paper because you really want to draw from direct observation and not from memory or imagination. Of course, those are other types of drawing you could do, but that's not the type I generally teach um, when we're trying to learn more about a real life animal in the field. So looking at your subject more than you look at the paper. And always kind of glancing back and forth quickly so that you look and maybe you, you look at the ear and you, you, you draw an ear and you look at the trunk and you draw the trunk and you look at a tusk and you draw a tusk. Okay. And so with that kind of practice, that was, gets it so that you can do something like this in about five minutes, like I did. How do you like my uh, little cartoon caricature of an elephant? And so once you learn how to draw something um, and really understanding its anatomy, that's how you can move on to if you want to draw something more fun like they do in cartoons. And every cartoonist ever from, you know, Disney cartoonists to those that draw the drawings for the, um, uh, you know, the Pixar movies, those people all very much understand very deeply the anatomy and behavior of the animals they're going to draw and turn into cartoons because you really have to start from real before you can move on to um, more fantasy, right? <laughs> Thanks, Joseph. Okay. Yeah. Again, Joseph, if you didn't get my email, go on over to my website. Hopefully maybe somebody can put my website in the chat box and um, you can find uh, a link somewhere on there to join my newsletter. Okay. And so let's see. Next, valuing the process over the product. And what I mean by that is really valuing what you're learning about your animal while you're drawing it. And so, you know, here's some more of the uh, handouts from my course. If you purchase that, all these high resolution images of the animal in different poses. So the more you observe something and draw it, the more you're going to learn about it. And it just takes more practice to actually get your drawings to look more realistic. All right. So I want you to really value that um, after you've drawn something like today, you're going to understand what it looks like more than any amount of just looking at something or photographing something um, than you would have gotten. Okay. All righty. So Eva, thank you. I'm so glad you love my elephant. Yeah. Now, um, above all, have fun, okay, because so many of us get stifled about drawing and we get so nervous and scared. Maybe somebody told us in grade school, maybe a parent or a sibling or, um, you know, a teacher that we really didn't have the talent for drawing. And you just have to shut those kind of people down, okay? Okay. Um, like um, my acquaintance, uh, Amy Tan, uh, you may know her, she wrote the Joy Luck Club and she uh, is in a nature sketching group um, with me. And she just wrote a book and illustrated it on birds. And she um, shared a story about how um, she was told when she was a kid, that she had no talent. And now, of course, she's a, a famous author as well as an illustrator of birds now, <laughs> okay? Okay. All righty. Um, okay, great. So thank you, Maria. Okay. And I'll, I can put some more links in later. 
Uh, let's see. So let's move on. We got to start um, sketching. So let me make this larger again. So I just want you again to think about a few things. I know many of you probably want to start drawing already, but please wait if you can, because the more you um, understand the drawing process and the anatomy, the better your uh, final drawing is going to be. Um, so noticing shapes and proportions. So here I've just started this drawing and you can see there's some circles, there's some triangles, there's some ovals, um, there's some rectangles. So that's the first thing, noticing uh, shapes and proportions as you start. And then noticing negative shapes. And those are these darkened shapes those are like the shapes of the savanna um, behind the uh, elephant. And you can see some of those are oval, some of those are uh, triangular or sort of square. And noticing those is just as important and helpful as noticing the actual shape of the subject that you're drawing. Okay. Now, noticing angles and alignments. So that means like here's a 90 degree angle between the ground and the, um, the, the uh, uh, leg here. Um, there's a 30 degree angle with this um, uh, ear, that kind of thing. And then alignments, like noticing that uh, it's sort of parallel between the line of the back and the line of the belly. And noticing flow lines. And that's what I call just kind of the concept of thinking about how your um, pencil would be flowing across that um, animal. Uh, also thinking about how if you were a little ant, it was crawling um, along the top of your elephant, whether that would be a smooth um uh, trail for the elephant, I mean, for the ant, or whether it would be a really bumpy one like this. <laughs> okay. Okie dokie. Now, um, I've got a, a couple very, very short, like minute long videos. And uh, watching uh, animals in the field, whether it's live in Africa or Asia, or whether it's just from a YouTube channel, is a really great way, again, to not only notice the anatomy we've been talking about, but understand their behavior and how that anatomy moves. Because, of course, um, an elephant is going to move in a very different way than, say, a giraffe or a zebra because of their um, their anatomy and their proportions and muscles. So let's just watch a couple of these and then we're going to start drawing in just a moment. Notice um, where this video stopped, you see that big shadow right there? So uh, I mentioned that earlier, that's kind of an indentation above the eyes. Um, so noticing those highlights and shadows. So when you add those um, with your graphite pencil for the shadows, or maybe with a um, white gel pen or white charcoal pencil. Um, you can you can see where those would be, like the highlights above and below that indentation, the highlights on the ear, the highlights on the belly, I mean, on the top of the um, hip there. Yes, Joseph, there's no sound effects. Okay, here's another one. Notice this one has its right ear has been injured. And that's another way um, to tell individuals. And also, so when you're drawing um, an individual, you know, it doesn't have to look exactly like your uh, photograph uh, because uh, lots of animals have different things like injuries that happen. Okay, so now who is ready to start? 
Let's get started. So again, thinking about all of those things we talked about, about anatomy and sketching tips as we start. So kind of looking at all the parts, I always do that first, uh, especially when I have a, a new photograph I'm, I'm drawing from. It might be in a different position than previous ones I've noticed. So again, we're thinking as we look at all these parts about the proportions, angles, alignments, and negative shapes. So now that we've looked, we're going to start very lightly and loosely. So I want you to hardly touch your paper, just have a feather light touch. And we're going to try to draw this elephant about the same proportions in this box as we do have in the photograph. We're just drawing the big brown one, not the little gray one. So just kind of getting some angles for the head and double checking how long the, the head is. And as you can see, you can barely see my drawing, but that's okay. I want you to just work on yours, but just notice how lightly I start in the beginning so that I'm not really worried about erasing. I'm not really married to those first lines. I'm just getting placed. And the triangle for the ear, remember, is kind of shaped like the continent of Africa. Double checking its size. Now going on to that uh, first limb. First double checking the width of the head. Then looking at the front limb and you see how sturdy those legs are. So, you know, they're not like a, a zebra or a giraffe. They're a bit very sturdy, more like a hippopotamus or a rhino. And so we're seeing the legs are basically touching the bottom of the paper and the, the rump of the elephant comes within about an inch of the back of the paper. So now getting a little bit more detail of the uh, withers and the back and the rump and coming down to the tail. So we go once over the elephant before we start going any heavier. So notice how big that belly is, that that belly, the height of the belly is about the same as the height of the legs, which of course is very different proportions than something like a giraffe. So every kind of mammal, all these hoofed mammals have different proportions of their body um, depth to their limb length. So now just blocking in those pillar-like legs and that very thick belly you see I'm measuring there. So again, much, much thicker than a giraffe or a zebra more in the proportions of a rhino or a hippo. And now getting that column-like leg, very sturdy and strong. They're, they're built for strength, not built for running like a gazelle or a wildebeest. And of course, you know, I've, I've done a lot of workshops on African uh, animals, including wildebeest and zebras. So you may have had some sketching experience with me before. So the front right limb, um, the elephant is bending it. So it's kind of walking. So again, thinking of those joints in that skeleton, imagining you can still see that skeleton, like you have x-ray vision. Then placing the back right leg, we're gonna really notice that white negative shape between the front and back limbs. And then that really big negative white shape between the back limbs right there that we're drawing. Now, of course, if you think we're going too fast, <laughs> you can always watch the recording. Okay, so don't be nervous at all. These recordings are always uh, available uh, indefinitely. Double checking the width of the whole body and pretty close. And 
And then moving on to the tail. And you can you see um, the tail is not like the tail of like a horse. Uh, it's more like the tail of a, a zebra where um, there's only hair at the very end. So we're going to draw that long tail. And you can see it's pretty close to the body. Oh, sorry, I haven't gotten the tail yet. Now, now the tail. <laughs> now we're going to come down with a line of the tail. And then there's that that fuzzy part that has the hair on it only at the end. And of course, uh, elephants use their tail like a lot of kinds of animals to not only swap insects, uh, but to communicate pleasure or displeasure. Okay, so now you see I'm doing just a little bit of cleanup with my eraser before I go and start to uh, make things a little bit um, stronger. Now I'm going to freeze this for just a moment. Um, to see if you can catch up. <laughs> and again, don't don't worry. Uh, you can always watch this again. And, and in the replay, you can skip ahead um, to the part where we start the sketching demo and go over it again. Uh, I may also upload this to YouTube. We'll see. I know in YouTube, you can play things at a slower or faster speed, I believe. Um, so anyway, as you see that I very lightly blocked in all of the parts and then I did just a little bit of erasing to lighten up the, the lines that weren't quite um, what I wanted. And so now we're going to start going over the whole elephant again, but with stronger, more confident, accurate lines. And we're going to start at the head so that you see I've got um, a close up of the head here. And this elephant is, um, you know, putting it, the, the tip of the trunk inside the mouth. Uh, so maybe it's eating or whatever. But I'm really noticing these shapes. Um, and later on, we'll um, add some of these um, wrinkles here on the trunk and uh, wrinkles around the eye and some of the shadows um, in the ear opening here, all of that. But first, just working on those shapes and relative proportions, okay? How are we all doing? Tell me in the chat box. I hope you guys are uh, following along. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Getting my mouse out of the way, sorry. Joseph, I have no idea what the temperature of an elephant is. I'm sure you could Google that. Okay, so starting with that bump on the head. Yes, Jacqueline, there are wonderful negative shapes to work with. And that's why I um, um, almost always try to give you a, a nice, clear side view against a white background so that you can see all those shapes. Uh, and again, all of these photographs I need to purchase as stock images. I don't steal them. I, I purchase them. So I'm allowed to use them and allowed to share them with you. And that is one of the many expenses of, um, of hosting these uh, free workshops. So uh, please, if you can, uh, donate uh, in any amount so I can see that you um, uh, value my time. And that donate button is in the chat box as well as uh, in a button um, below and on my website at christineelder.com slash donate. So Eva, yes, the ears look like half of a heart. That's true. So it does really help, you know, when you're looking at something to say like the word, oh, it reminds me of. And that's um, something my colleague uh, Jack Laws always says. So when you're looking at something, think about those shapes and say, what does this um, structure or shape remind me of? So here I'm double checking and noticing I hadn't quite made my, my trunk long enough. So you always really want to go back and forth and really looking to see that you're drawing um, what we're observing and not from your memory or imagination. Often when we're um, first learning how to draw, we will draw things that we think are more important, larger. 
just like when little kids are drawing um, uh, a person's uh, body <laughs> um, and they'll draw the head really big and they'll draw the eyes super big, but they won't give them any forehead, right? Because we think that heads and eyes are super important. So you got to be really careful and not to draw things that you um, too large that um, you think are the important parts. And of course, as you see in elephants, they have very small eyes. So now I'm drawing this trunk and again, noticing that nice sort of teardrop white shape that I'm drawing there. And noticing how thick the trunk is at the um, top there below the eye compared to how skinny it gets where it's um, going into the elephant's mouth. And the mouth is slightly open and you see the lower lip here. And then now you see that I am firming up these lines. So, you know, my suggestion is always to start super light and loose and quick. And then as you um, really have observed something longer and are starting to really see the proportions, then you can start pressing down a little harder like I am here with my mechanical pencil. I love drawing with mechanical pencils because they always stay sharp. Now, if I'm in the field, I often am not using a pencil because they end up smearing inside my journal. And so I've gotten pretty good at drawing uh, in um, various types of pens and felt tip pens and colored pencils, which don't smear as much. Now placing the eye, so you see the um, there's a, a strong... Uh, highlight above the eye and shadow below, but we're just first trying to place it. And what you, you barely see the eye, you mainly see kind of the, um, the lines uh, around the upper and lower eyelid. And then, so I'm adding a few of those uh, lines. We do generally like to spend a little bit more time on eyes on mammals, but elephants have such small eyes compared to cats and dogs and, and like horses, but they are quite expressive if you saw it up close. But we got that eye and a few lines above and below. We really want to firm up this face and add some of those uh, wrinkles on the trunk. Again, the trunk is used for lots of purposes, eating and drinking and communicating and bathing and dust bathing. So it's got 40,000 muscles I read in that trunk alone. Okay, moving on to that heart shape, half heart shape or Africa continent shaped uh, ear. So just like us, there's an ear hole. So that's the shadow I was just adding. Up here, that's where the uh, opening to the ear is. And they do have excellent hearing because they do live out in the open savanna and they need to hear uh, their, their um, herd members coming from miles away and also need to notice if there um, are any predators coming. So we see uh, the uh, we see the elephant's right ear. I mean, sorry, the left ear. The elephant's left ear we're drawing right now, but also there's a shadow below it, and that is the um, inside of the elephant's right ear. So just noticing that. And in, in this case, there's a deep shadow under the ear because the elephant is in the process of flapping its ears. So if this elephant was relaxed and the um, ear was all the way flat against the shoulder, there wouldn't be any cast shadow under the ear and the ear would actually also appear larger. 
Okay, moving on to the shoulder. Again, imagining that skeleton we looked at earlier where there are the, the withers and then the back and then the hip bone and then the back of the hip. A little bit more details of the hairy part of the tail. Only that last foot or so has these long kind of stringy um, coarse hairs. And then firming up the back of the hip where inside there would be the, the pelvic bone. And then moving down to the um, upper leg where the... Uh, knee is and then down to the toes and there's the hip again and the l uh, the knee would be right there inside in that shadow and then coming down to the lower leg and then the toes they have four toenails on their front and their back in the in the african elephant So different mammals have different numbers of toes. Usually it's um, two to four or five. Well, if you're a horse, there's one. So usually one or two or four or five, depending on the type of mammal. And some mammals have the same number of toes on the front and the rear legs and others have different numbers. Again, double checking my proportions and looking at that line, that flow line that comes down from the, the ear and the withers down to the elbow. So right there is the elbow bone underneath that skin. And then the forearm and then the lower arm. And then the big pad of the feet. And then getting the rear, I mean, the, the right, the right um, arms and legs. And as we do that, again, noticing those wonderful white negative shapes. I want you to look at those just as much as you're looking at the shape of the elephant. It's almost easier to look at those because that can um, kind of help you to uh, not be intimidated by drawing an elephant. You're just drawing white spaces. And that will really help you to become much more accurate in your drawing. So like right here, you can see that negative shape between the, the right front and rear limb. And then look how close those limbs are, uh, the toes, the right and the right fore and rear limb. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of dyslexic. Now here, I think I'm a little bit wrong. I probably could have put my um, my right, my, my left rear leg a little bit farther back so that I don't have quite as big of a negative shape there as I could have. You see that? So I, I think I'm a little bit off there, but that's okay. Um, you know, the more you know about the anatomy and a behavior of an animal, the more you know if, if you feel like you really need to um, be as, exact in in copying the what you're looking at so if you know of course they're moving their limbs a lot so the limbs could have just moved in my elephant compared to the photograph okay so you're probably maybe still working on your um your proportions of your sketch but i'm gonna move on to um giving some shadowing so uh I'm, i've moved on to a regular sketching pencil but again, don't feel like you have to move on to this yet. You can keep working on your proportions. I'm just going to start adding some shadowing. And I think I'll just pause here just for a second like I did before. So that you can kind of catch up. chat box. So before we start shadowing here, a 
just kind of thinking about a couple things. Some of you guys have heard of this and some of you haven't. So thinking about a value scale. So when you're drawing and beginning to start adding some shadowing for both uh, highlights and shadows from the sun, as well as just past shadows and kind of showing three-dimensional form of our elephant, you can kind of think of your values as going in a scale, maybe from one to five is a good amount of numbers to start with, with one being just the white of the paper, which would be the brightest highlights, and five being the darkest shadows, like under the elephant's belly. And sometimes when I'm drawing, I'll make a little uh, shape like this, um, a, a value scale, and I will put that over the um, elephant I'm drawing here to help really see shadows. And also, if you turn something upside down, this is a different photo than we're drawing, obviously, but you can see the shadows much better. Notice that when I've got that value scale next to my photograph and I've turned it upside down, it's so much easier for your mind to see those values. Otherwise, your mind is thinking, oh, trunk, belly, tail, and it's not thinking of the values as much. But notice how helpful that is. So I really suggest at this point that you might turn your sketch upside down and let me come back here a bit. And then you can really see those values um, better. How many of you are new today? Again, tell me new in the chat box. Maybe you haven't heard this stuff before. Um, but even if you have, it's really good to think about every single time you draw something about switching um, to your right brain and thinking about those values, okay? Okay, great. Rhea. Oh, hi, Rhea. Yes, it's getting late. You're in Amsterdam. I cannot wait to visit Amsterdam. Maybe I will stop over there on my way to Africa. Okay, so let's get back to drawing. Now I'm just using this little blending tool. You could use a Q-tip or this thing that's called a, a blending stomp or a tortillion. And uh, these are really easy to get in any art store. Or again, just using a Q-tip or your finger. But those just help to uh, more softly blend the graphite or the charcoal. I could also show you how I do that in a minute with... Um, live here, but let's keep going with this. So I will um, move back and forth between uh, putting graphite or charcoal down like I am now and then blending with the blending stomp. So sometimes I'll put all of the, um, the media down and then blend or I'll go kind of back and forth. Oh, Joseph, hi, you're new. Well, welcome. Thank you so much. I'd love to know how you found out about today's workshop. And please, if you're really enjoying this workshop, you can just cut and paste the link above that brought you to this workshop and send it to your friends or pa paste it right into your um, Facebook page and it will populate um, as a clickable link. So I would really appreciate if you uh, can't afford to buy one of my courses or you can't afford to donate. One way you could really support me and get the word out to more folks about the um, pleasure and value of uh, sketching wildlife. Um, I'd really appreciate that if you could share um, this link in an email to a friend or maybe you know a teacher or an environmental educator or click it. Um, put that link right into a Facebook post and it will populate as a clickable link for your friends to click on. Because of course you can watch this these anytime in the future. Um, the benefit of course in joining lives, I get to um, say hi and ask and answer questions with you in the chat box. Um, and also you get to come on live at the end and share your sketches or any questions you may have. And I'll tell you how to do that um, in a bit. 
Right. So folks are mentioning Maria and Eva that your legs are a little bit um, wonky and, and that's fine. You know, the more you sketch something, uh, the better you'll get and uh, the more accurate you'll get. And again, don't be um, dismayed if your drawing doesn't look like you want it to look like. I want you just to value the process of improving um, just like any skill, riding a bike or or playing an instrument uh, or any um, activity you do, you just get um, better as you practice. And even if your elephant is unrecognizable and it might you can't tell your elephant from a from a dog <laughs> or a giraffe, that's okay too. Just value how much you've learned about elephants in the process of just looking at it long enough to sketch. And so that's what I really like to emphasize is that um, I don't care what your drawing looks like or even if you crumple it up and throw it in the trash after this. You, the value is in what has been put in your mind as you've been sketching and thinking about an elephant for this long. So just keep working on this. And this can take quite a while. And sometimes I will, um, you know, finish a drawing session and then I will let my sketch sit a couple days and maybe come back to it later. And sometimes that will give you a fresh view of something and you'll be more able to more accurately um, look at what you've drawn and make better improvements to it in a future time. Oh, hi, Joji. You're um, coming in from Flagstaff, Arizona. Great to see you again, Joji, one of my longtime uh, viewers, just like uh, Rhea and Jay and Jacqueline. Really appreciate you guys following me for all these years. So now you see I'm just um, adding some more uh, graphite continuing to work on things. And I just happen to be using this, uh, I think it's a 4B or a 6B graphite sketching pencil. So that's just uh, a little bit softer than I started with. So that gives you um, more graphite on the paper to be able to blend and darken. And so this, this process is quite iterative, meaning, you know, you keep, you keep um, adding, you know, more versions, you keep looking back and forth, keep uh, ground truthing, as we call it. That is uh, just really looking at your subject, whether it's a live elephant in the field or a photograph like we have here today. Now, of course, for homework, I encourage you to uh, watch this again. Maybe look at those uh, videos that I shared. Maybe go on YouTube and practice uh, drawing uh, elephants from YouTube videos you watch. Or also, um, if you do purchase my uh, mammals course, uh, there are something like six more pages of reference photos for you to practice drawing from. And yeah, for some of you who have uh, purchased my courses in the past, um, I'm updating all of my courses right now. And what I'm doing is I'm embedding the videos directly into the course. Um, in the past, I wasn't able to do that, uh, but now I am. And so I spent really basically the last week full time moving all of my videos from a different hosting source and putting them directly into your courses. So whether you've brought, bought my, um, my uh, courses on uh, drawing and painting flowers or birds or mammals or insects or fishes or reptiles, any one of my 16 courses, I am um, full-time working on getting all of those. So for the mammal course, I'm just about done. There's only a couple videos left 
that are not directly embedded. So I'm hoping that that's going to make the um, viewing experience um, a lot better for you and a lot better value for you and your for your time than needing to um, go outside of the, the teachable platform where I host my courses. Okay, Maria, take care. Thanks for joining us. Okay, and so here you see I have added that, a little bit more details. And here, here I've added even more. So I worked on this a bit more today. So you can see, sorry, it's coming in and out of focus. You see I just added some more values so that I have a greater range of values. And then, yeah, you can do that also with, um, you know, here's my other quicker one. And here I was using uh, this this uh, charcoal pencil. And it's kind of fun. I like the sound of charcoal. Okay, great. So, um, so again, I hope you had a lot of fun learning about uh, African elephants in all of their uh, shapes and forms. Okie dokie. I get to go. Take care. Bye.